I'm about to do a video or a Skype interview with Australian Music Magazine, so I thought I'd film it and let you guys see how it goes when I do an interview. About to call Greg. Hello? Hello! How's it going? Yeah, really good. Before we start talking about your single on the EP, I, I wanted to go back right to the start. Okay. Well, growing up, do you remember when, when the music bug first hit you? Oh, yeah. You know, Greg, I come from a, a really musical family. Like, my mum met my dad because she was a fan of his band. So uh, my sisters and I were born with music in us. It was like the default thing to do. And my dad started teaching me music from Vicky Carr and Tammy Wynette and Connie Francis, all the greats, when I was really little. Yeah. Those are some of my youngest memories I've had of singing. Yeah. And, um, and did you learn an instrument grow up? Um, I did. I learned guitar in, um, in primary school. I went to a public school and we were so lucky to have an American music teacher, Mr. Lederbrand. I learned guitar. I wasn't very good, but he nurtured yeah. my musical talent for sure. I see you on your, your Facebook post. You, you play ukulele? A little bit, yeah. I love the ukulele. Yeah. I have uh, an endorsement with a beautiful, beautiful um, ukulele company out of Hawaii called Kamaka. And uh, yeah. so, yeah, I try and play when I can. I, I write a lot on the ukulele. You came to prominence through probably the first of the new new wave, new wave of TV talent shows. Right. Um, looking back, looking back, the, the pros and cons of, of doing that. I really feel like there mm. weren't very many cons. I would say it was mostly a positive experience, except for the fact that I didn't really understand what reality TV was. You know, I was very naive in the fact that I thought reality was going to be just that. Just exactly what happens is yeah. what gets captured. But, but you learn very quickly it's not when you're asked to wake up again so they can get the B coverage and that kind of thing. That was, that was very weird. And then, of course, seeing yeah. how, how things can be easily... Um, manipulated to tell a certain narrative through editing, that was something that was a, a huge learning experience for me as well. Now you're uh, a totally uh, uh, indie artist and total yes. control of your own uh, Yes, music. yes, all of it. Nothing manufactured um, with what I'm doing now, which is really nice. It's, it's also nice having the background of, of being part of a pop a pop group and, and knowing what it's like to have other writers and other songs be the songs you have to do as your content, but I love the creative freedom I have now. I wouldn't, I wouldn't change that for the world. And how long have you been in LA? I've lived here for 12 years, actually. Was it hard starting out or did you have a network of friends already in the music industry? Um, it, was, it was a little bit challenging. I moved First, uh, I was living in Sydney and then I moved to uh, the United Kingdom, to London, because it seemed like the easiest transition for me. A lot of us Aussies do that. Um, and yeah. then I really, I really just couldn't take the weather. It was, it was a little too morbid for me, the lack of sun, and I'm such a beach girl. So I would visited here a few times and I knew one guy, Smitty, who I still am in touch with. He still does music. And he was like, Shan, just move over. It's cool. All you've got is a suitcase anyway. So I pretty much did that and uh, hoped and prayed that things would go my way. There were definitely struggles sometimes, but, you know, as with any new place, you kind of, you sift through the good and the bad quite quickly. You seem to be collaborating with uh, people occasionally too. Yes, I love collaborating. It's just basically two energies getting together and seeing what they come up with. So, so it's enjoyable. So your new single, One Step Closer, yeah. what's it about and how did the song come about? I'm very much a singer-songwriter in the fact that any time I have any kind of experience that affects me deeply on an emotional level, I write about it. In this particular song, I'm talking about um, trying to be as close as I can with this person, but in, in, in that push of trying to become closer, we're actually pushing each other farther away. Where did you do the final re recording and who produced it? I produced it myself, actually. Um, I did the recording right here. This is my little home studio. It's, it's like my dining room yeah. corner. I have really fantastic gear. Uh, Sennheiser sponsors me, so I have fantastic microphones and whatnot. It was my first real shot at producing and just going with my gut. Scott White played on it. Zach Savage played on it, and then I got it mixed by a guy named James Mushorn over at Red Bull LA Studios. You're using Logic to create your music? How oh, yeah. long have you been playing with that program? About a year. I started producing about a year ago, 
Um, it's okay. yeah, it's it's something that I always really wanted to do. Producing came along out of necessity for me. I needed a job, and a friend of mine from Australia, Dinesh Wicks, moved over here, and he said, "Come work for me. I'll teach you how to compose." And I said to him, "Yeah, I don't think you understand my skill set." And he said, "No, no, trust me. I'll help you." And he did. So I bought all the programs I learned, and uh, he was a really, really great teacher and mentor. And now that's what I do. I kind of just run with my instincts. I know what sounds I need to hear is above all, and, and that's what helps me get through things. And then if I need help, I have a bevy of musicians around me that can always help. Do you allocate yourself songwriting time? Do you, uh, do you treat it like a job, or is it really only when inspiration strikes? I try and do it only when I'm inspired. I'm often inspired late at night so I'll have a lot of late nights where I'm up till 3 a.m. just like banging out a song and you know it, that's, that's just kind of when it happens for me. There's a clip on YouTube uh, an acapella version of the same Smith song. Yes. Uh, how long did you spend layering the vocals for that one? From start to finish I would say about three hours. And why did you decide to go with an EP rather than a, a full length? album this time. My manager suggested putting an EP out because that's just a better format these days and people have such a short attention span in this day and age with sure. social media and new things coming at you every five seconds that yeah. I kind of agreed. And I saw that you performed at NAMM this year. Yes, I did. Um, I'm a regular at NAMM. I love the convention. I, I just go there and I geek out. I mean, have you ever been to NAMM, Greg? Yeah, a few times. Okay, cool. So you know how amazing it is. It's like kid in a candy store. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> There's everything available to you, and I love that. Um, and because I am uh, endorsed by Sennheiser and also Kamaka, I'm always asked to perform at their booths, which I happily, readily do. What's happening with your acting work at the moment? I love my music and my acting. People always ask me to choose between them, and I think it, it just seems to happen that when the acting is slow, the music is going full ball. But right now, I'm kind of relieved that I don't have too much responsibility with the acting so that I can focus on the music. Would you rather win an Oscar or a Grammy? A Grammy? Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess I've never been asked that question, so that, that that's the answer. Yeah, I'd love to win a Grammy. The music is the passion then. Yeah, I couldn't give up the music if I wanted to, and I, I, I can't ever see myself wanting to, but I love, I just love music. It's, it's the first thing I think about when I wake up and the last thing I think about when I go to sleep yeah we do a thing called six quicks where i just fire six quick questions at you cool uh your favorite album bachelor girl waiting for the day a song you're really into at the moment oh jesse Ware, champagne kisses gorgeous song best gig you've ever been to i got to go to uh one of lionel richie's concerts in texas and i got to fly on his private plane with him um and go through the back doors and the all the back special vip ways that was definitely the best gig I've been to. Best thing about LA? The weather. Best thing about Perth? <laughs> My family. When will you perform in Australia again? Really good question. I'd love, I'd love to go to Australia to work. And I, keep, I keep saying that. I love my roots. I love that I'm Australian. I'm very proud of that. So doing music back there and getting to tour and collaborate with other Australian artists, I'm all for it. So what's, what's the grand plan for Chantel Barry? The grand plan? Oh, I don't know. That's too much. That's a big question. The grand plan is just to be happy. Happiness. Happiness is the key to everything. All right, Chantal, I'll let you go. Thanks okay. for your time. Thank you so much. This is such a nice chat. I was super stoked when I, you reached out to me to, to ask me to do this interview. Uh, I, I looked you up just to double check that it was the, the same Australian music magazine that I thought it was. And I was like, oh my gosh, I have an interview with Australian <laughs> music magazine. So thank you. This means a lot to me. It's been great to meet you. Oh, you too. Thanks, Greg. Have a great night. You too. Bye. Bye. So, there it was. I will let you know when the interview is out. Click to subscribe to my page and thanks for watching.